Hi guys, my name's Nim and as always, I'm here to cast a light on your shadow and to help you traverse your Shadowverse journey. Okay, so this one is probably going to be a uh, vlog. Uh, I had an idea about starting a vlog a while ago just to kind of document some things. Because this journey is so varied, uh, this journey is... There's just so many things that happen unexpectedly on a day-to-day -day basis. It's just um, some things I just feel that need to be shared. So I'm going to keep this one very simple, short, straight to the point. Um, so I'm recording this on the 15th of July, 2023. Uh, and uh, something actually happened today. Um, actually, two things happened, which were kind of intertwined. So um, I'm meditating and, you know, I'm connecting in and... Uh, I asked like my higher self, you know, for guidance as I always do. And uh, I th it wasn't just today, I think it was before as well, but today I was sort of reminded again to go and get a beach uh, brolly. No idea why. Um, I was told to buy a white colored one. I don't know why. Uh, I guess white because it's like the highest frequency uh, as related to the crown chakra, it's highest frequency. Um, so I, I went looking, uh, I decided, right, today I'm going to go to the beach. I'm not doing anything else at home. It's too hot. We've had crazy, crazy heat here in Spain. Um, so much so that I read this morning that the temperatures were a whopping 60, de 60 degrees centigrade. Yes, you heard that right. 60, 60 degrees centigrade. Um, I'm not sure how much that is in Fahrenheit. Um, but if you probably go on to the internet, there's probably an automatic conversion where you can just type it in and that will tell you what it is in Fahrenheit for those of you that live across the pond. Um, in some parts of Spain, we've had 60 degrees um, and that has literally broken every record ever because they've never had anything that's gone beyond 53, 54, I think. That's been the highest of record, but this is actually 60. It's never crossed over 55. Um, anyway, so I decided, right, it's been really hot. I'm going to go to the beach today. So I went to the beach, uh, bought my, my breach probably. And um, I had a bit of an incident. <laughs> I decided to leave my, well, I, I sort of set it up. Um, and I put, I put it in uh, this is this screw bit that you kind of like a drill bit that you, you put it in, you drill it into the ground. I didn't quite set it up correctly. Beginner's mistake, you know, novice's mistake. Don't know. First time I ever bought one, never used one before. And uh, what it was is I actually um, I decided to kind of uh, go for a swim. So I took my shirt and my t shirt off took my shades off, uh, earplugs, uh, earpods went into the earpod holder, I went for a swim. Um, when I was in the in the water in the sea for a bit, um, I realised, I turned around and I realised that at that point my beef probably had sort of come up. It had uprooted, the wind had pushed it away and the sharp pointy bit from the, the, the drill part had actually gone into this guy's uh, stomach, his, like his gut area. And I was like, what you know what just happened i i was i was a bit i was quite shocked i was like what happened and i profusely apologized to this guy um initially he was um he was obviously quite um i think he was a little annoyed and quite rightly so i can appreciate why he would be but two things one when you raise your own vibration you know heading down to the beach feeling good you know uh, you head down the vibration remember karma is also an important thing it's not just feeling a good vibration all the time having a good heart and a good soul is important karma the law of karma is often overlooked by a lot of people on this journey because everybody's just focusing too much on the law of manifestation the law of attraction the law of vibration the law of assumption they forget the law of karma Karma plays a huge role when it comes to manifesting. If you have accumulated lots and lots and lots of bad karma, what goes around is gonna come around. So, but this guy was, eventually he was quite forgiving. I said to him, look, I'm really sorry. I've got some paracetamol with me. Be welcome to take some. I didn't know what else to say to, say to him. I mean, I was just, I had nothing else to offer but my apology. In the end, he actually turned around, you know, he was leaving eventually, he said, not the better called Nino, so he's like, don't worry about it, my child. Um, Nino's quite, um, 
uh, Nino can mean like girl, boy can mean child, but it's he wasn't that he wasn't that much older than me. Uh, well, he he was older, but he wasn't like uh, he wasn't exactly a grandfather's age. At least to me, he didn't. But it's it's just a very compassionate and a very loving way that people address someone who's younger um, in Spain. It's just a very Spanish thing to say Nino, Nina, um, if you're a girl. Um, but what I walked away from that is, is that he showed me forgiveness and compassion. That gentleman reminded me that no matter how much, how irritated you might get over something, forgiveness and compassion should always come first. Now, I know I appreciate that it's not going to be the case with anything and everything that you do. Um, you are going to be able to forgive somebody. I appreciate that. You might have an ex, you might have a friend whom you don't talk to, there may be a relative, a family member with whom you don't get on with. You probably haven't even spoken to them in years. I get it and I appreciate. The first thing I'm gonna say is, yes, you do not need to ignore your feelings. Somebody has treated you in a certain way, you are entitled to feel the way you do. Um, if you do feel quite pain, a lot of pain, yes, feel it, validate those emotions to yourself, but you need to do it to yourself. If you get the opportunity to speak to that person, tell them, let them know how you felt, let them be aware of what it is that you experienced when you last spoke to them, or shortly after you stopped talking to them, how you felt, they need to be made aware. Okay, because by making them may aware, people change. Okay, I'm not saying everybody does. Some people don't. I appreciate that, but some people change. You know, some people change for the better. Um, and who knows? If you haven't spoken to somebody, say five years, they will probably um, they may have changed. And you know, you you may be in a position then to say, okay, you've changed. You know, um, you can forgive them. Um, I'm actually reminded very recently of a kind of a forgiveness spree, um, seeking and offering that I went through um, last year. Um, I decided to reach out to a number of different women that I had dated in the past. And one of them was somebody that I went on a date 11 years ago. 11 years ago, we dated and it was very, very briefly. But I realized something from that person that when I asked them for, when I sought an apology from them, they gave it to me straight away. In 11 years, people can change. People can change in six months. The point I'm making is forgiveness and compassion is something that you really need to have within you. If you offer it to somebody, one day when you're at fault, whether you're deliberately or, you know, un, you know just it, you, something like this that may have happened, you were not aware, genuinely I wasn't aware. And that's why this guy forgave me. He showed me compassion, he reminded me, and I'm really grateful to that gentleman. Subsequently, there was another uh, lady on the beach who then decided to get up and showed me how to actually, uh, she said to me, this, this, this um, drill bit that they sell separately with it, it is useless. It doesn't perform the function of what it's supposed to do. She just showed me an alternative way of how to um, set it up without using the drill bit. And um, I was really grateful to that lady. She just said, look, don't worry about it. She said, I know, you know, it's fine. She said, just do it this way and it won't collapse. And it didn't for the majority part of the day until until the end, it didn't collapse. It, stay, it remained standing, um, which, was, which was quite nice. A while later, um, this, this lady who helped me out, I believe she was sitting with her mother at the beach, their um, beach brolly sort of collapsed. And I, I'm not sure if it broke, but I decided to get up and do the gentleman thing um, and ask, offer them some shade under mine. Now, what I got in that moment was my kind of nice guy syndrome kind of kicked in and I questioned it. I began questioning this nice guy syndrome because I was wondering, am I being too much of a nice guy? Or um, am I repaying my debt to her? I felt like I felt obliged because she came out and helped me. And as somebody who is an advocate, and a, I, I believe quite thoroughly in the law of karma, 
if somebody's helped me, is it nice guy syndrome for me to, to kind of help somebody else? I'm not quite sure. But as far as I can remember that in that very moment, what I felt was the right thing to do was to repay my karma. She had no obligation to come and help me, but she did. I decided to repay the favor. Um, so I, I realized that, you know, sometimes even when it comes to things like nice guy syndrome, people talk about it these days, it's quite a hot topic. Um, nice guy, nice girl syndrome. Um, yeah, kind of question it. I would say question it. Um, if it's a case of you're repaying karma, go for it. Um, because you might, well, again, I don't know. This isn't really for me to say because I don't know whether you believe in karma or not. Everyone, each to their own, I respect that. Uh, I personally believe if you believe in karma, you believe in the law of karma, then it is a good idea to repay the favor because otherwise you may have to reincarnate and you may have to repay the favor again. Um, so that happened. Uh, I also found a bit more money. <laughs> Lucky. Well done, Nim. Thank you, universe. And um, the last thing that I'm going to wrap this one up with here is um, I was reading in Esther Hicks's book, um, which is Ask For Ask For It and It's Given. Um, I've now got to the point in the book, uh, which is now talking about the 22 um, methods that you can employ. And um, she has mentioned about the magical box um, idea, which is number two. Number one is rampage of appreciation. And I'm going to experiment with it. So watch this space. Um, I'm going to keep that bit a bit private until, yeah, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how it goes. Because I don't want to kind of start talking about it. And if it doesn't work, you know, I have to appreciate it. it's going to take time um, because of the way it is. But again, what I will say, and I'll leave you with this, is if you've not read the book, get a copy. Ask for it. And it is given by Esther, Jerry and Esther Hicks. Um, just reading about half the book has really opened my mind up to the law of attraction. It's really opened my mind up to the law of manifestation. Um, not so much the law of assumption, but she kind of, because I think that's more kind of Neville Goddard's work, but it's kind of going in that direction. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to toy with the idea. I'm going to play with it. Um, and I will get back to you on that. So I'm going to wrap this one up here, guys. Thank you so much for hanging about. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe to my channel. Drop me a comment below uh, if you'd like to work with me one-to-one -one, or if you'd like to ask any questions or leave any comments, however you feel. Um, anything and everything is uh, welcome to this space. In the meantime, this is Nim signing out. Take care. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.